welcome to ILTV's Evening Update. I'm Natasha Kirchuk here with the latest news from Israel. Israeli and Palestinian security officials met last night in Jerusalem to discuss the fate of their future security coordination. Even though diplomatic ties have fallen apart amid the ongoing wave of violence in Israel, officials from Israel and the Palestinian Authority have expressed interest in continuing security coordination. At the same time, reports claim that Palestinian leaders have warned Israeli officials that coordination will not continue if the IDF continues to operate in the Area A territories in the West Bank. Despite the threat, the Israeli government is skeptical that the PA will stop cooperating with Israel, since it's a key to keeping Hamas and other terror groups from threatening Fatah's control of the Palestinian Authority. It looks like two infamous Israeli leaders are embroiled in political scandals again. Interior Minister Ali Adeli is at the center of two severe corruption probes, and the cases could have dramatic repercussions for Derry and the coalition government. Derry served 22 months in prison between 2000 and 2002, after he was convicted of taking bribes while serving as interior minister, the same post he holds today. Derry isn't the only one in trouble. Israeli opposition leader Isaac Herzog is now the subject of a police probe revolving around the 2013 primary elections for the Labour Party. There are suspicions that Herzog received illegal political funding in the elections, but the Labour Party leader has dismissed the accusations as delusional political muckraking. It's not the first time Herzog has been accused of wrongdoing relating to campaign funding. Just like Minister Derry, Herzog got in trouble in 1999 when he was investigated in connection with alleged campaign irregularities on the part of former Prime Minister Ehud Barak. The army has demolished the home of the terrorist Ihab Maswada from Hebron, who tragically murdered an Israeli civilian. In December, Ihab Maswada stabbed and critically wounded 40-year-old Jenadi Kaufman near the tomb of the patriarchs. Kaufman later died of his wounds, and the terrorist was shot and killed at the scene of the attack. Maswada's home has now been demolished by IDF bulldozers, and the demolition took place under the watch of Israeli border police and representatives of the civil administration. Imagine a surgical robot that could travel to battlefields to perform minimally invasive surgeries on wounded soldiers by calling up doctors halfway across the world. This might sound super futuristic, but it isn't. Both the American and Israeli armies are pouring money into robotics, with the hope to use robots on the battlefield. The Israeli Technion University is on a mission to bring robots into the military by making sure that humans can stay in control. Medical robots could work effectively in the battlefield, but they need to be able to call up doctors for help who aren't by their side. Researchers are struggling to figure out how to make sure doctors on satellite phones can stay connected to the robots in case something goes wrong. And when they figure that out, it looks like the IDF will be working with a lot more robotic surgeons. That's all for now. Stay tuned on ILTV.TV for our main daily broadcast playing after this. I'm Natasha Kirchuk and see you Sunday with our morning briefing from Israel at 8 a.m. Eastern Time.